If you're just getting started writing or editing code, it's important to be able to keep track of your changes and make sure you're not overlapping or forgetting anything. Now the best way to do this is using git, and it's much more useful than a simple git clone command. Although a git clone will allow you to take down a repository you're interested in modifying and keep track of it once it's on your system. We'll show you how to use git on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Version control systems are ways of keeping track of modifications to code by people who are looking to either start their own project and work collaboratively, or download code that somebody else has already started. Now, it can quickly get confusing when you're testing out new features or otherwise trying out things that might not work, and you don't want to completely ruin your master branch with something that you might try out that could end up not panning out. Now, it's pretty easy to use, but beginners often only understand the git clone command, which is the easiest way to grab someone else's repository and clone it to a local branch on your, on your system. After that, there's a lot more you can do, and if you want to be able to work with other people on your project or push code back in a way that can implement some cool features and share it with the community, it's good to understand the various phases that a program will go through when someone is writing it and using git. Now, within Git, you'll have an index, which is basically a list of all the files that are being tracked by the system and modified as you change them. There will also be a staging portion where you can propose things to be added to the index, which will eventually be done with what's called a commit. Now, a commit is when you've decided that something, a modification or a feature or something like that, is worthy of being added to the index and thus being made a permanent part of the program. Now the point is you can also go back in time and look at a previous version of your software, which is really important in case something you added ends up needing to be removed and you want to go back to a more simple version of what you've done. Now Git is a really helpful thing to use because it's very simple and installed by default on many systems. So once you identify that you have Git, we can begin. Now in order to get started using Git, it's important to understand the difference as a beginner between Git and GitHub. Now, Git is installed on most systems by default and is used to manage different versions of programs and lets you work on different features without ruining the entire thing. And you can go back to different versions if you really do mess something up and have to roll things back. GitHub, by comparison, is a whole bunch of repositories that you can connect to remotely and pull down other people's interesting and cool projects to either work on yourself or just run. Now, most hackers have used GitHub a time or two, but if you haven't before, you'll just go to a project you like, in this case, just something I wrote in order to track uh, humans in space, uh, click clone or download, and then right here, you'll copy the HTTPS link to the GitHub repository. Now, the repository is all the files that are needed in order to run it, but that does exclude often some uh, libraries that you might need to download and install in order for this to run properly. Now, most GitHub repositories that are uh, made well will have any uh, particular dependencies that you'll need listed and uh, available as an installation file, but we're not going to go into that today because we're just going to execute a simple git clone command in order to get the contents of this repository copied to our uh, local computer. So we'll go ahead and go to a terminal window and, and we will type in git clone and see that we have now um, cloned into space API. So if we change directory and then list, we can see that the files that we can see on the GitHub repository over here are now on my local system and I can cat uh, track iss.py and here we go. We've actually copied all this code down and now we can, if we want, start to make our own modifications. Now, before we do that, I want to show you how to actually create your own repository in case you are starting from scratch and you don't want to just, you know, use something that has already uh, been created. So if you want to do that, you can just make a new directory, which, which you can do with mkdir and then test to name the directory test. And now we can see there's nothing in here. Oh, wait. Uh, well, actually, let's cd into test. There we go. Now we can see there's nothing in here yet. And we can make this a uh, GitHub repository by typing git init. 
So now we have an empty Git repository within this, uh, which we can keep track of different files. And we'll make our first file by just, uh, let's do touch um, test.txt. Now if we ls, we can see there's something there and we can put some, um, we can actually put something in there by typing cat redirect to test.txt. And we'll just say, here is some test stuff and some code. And then control C. And just to test this, we'll type cat test.txt. Here we go. And our we now have a file in here uh, that is test.txt and it contains some, um, some random text. Great, so let's see what our, the status of our GitHub repository is right now. We can type git status. And you can see that we are not tracking this file yet. So in our empty GitHub repository, while we acknowledge that we're keeping track of this folder, there's a folder in there that we haven't actually added yet. So that's gonna be our next step because we need to do that in order to officially track it. So let's type git add and then test.txt. Great, so now we can type git status again. And you can see that we are now tracking it, but we haven't actually committed it yet. So the next step would be to actually commit this so that we have a fully updated version of the git repository. So if we just type git commit, then we need to go over and approve any um, things that might be conflicts. And this is where you can see basically a review of all the things that are being changed. So this automatically opens in uh, Vim, so it might be useful to know how to interact with and quit Vim. Uh, but in this case, we'll just type our uh, uh, notes that we're gonna leave for this, which we'll type I for insert, and then uh, just let's leave a comment that we are doing a very important thing. And then we'll escape, uh, we'll write quit, and then boom. We have successfully oh, <laughs> aborted the commit due to an empty uh, commit message. So you will see that there, it's very serious about you leaving a commit message. Uh, I'll leave one now. Um, hello. And then we'll escape and right quit. There we go. So now we have it updated. Um, and this time it did not abort, but keep in mind, if you're getting this error, it could be because you just don't actually provide a commit message and it does not like that. So, okay, that's great. Now we have a project we're working on, but what if we don't, what if we don't want to mess it up while we're working on a new feature and we don't want to maybe interfere with something that uh, we're working on and, and maybe we want to have another person work on a separate feature so we can all work on this project together. Well, that's where things can get a little bit more complicated, but we'll show you how to work with that by using a git branch. So let's say we want to do um, git branch and then we want to name the branch um, new feature. There we go. So now let's uh, check out new feature. Oops, uh, sorry, get checkout new feature. And now we've switched and we're working on our development branch uh, that's called new feature. So what that means is that we are switching out of our master branch and that'll allow us to make any changes in kind of a, a temporary space where if we need to roll things back, the master hasn't been affected and this uh, working version that we're working on now is something that we can kind of isolate and prevent from uh, damaging something we're working on or someone else is working on. Now, when you merge this back, you will need to make sure that any changes that you've made don't interfere with the original version or changes that somebody else has made. And in order to make sure that no other changes have already been made to the file, you can do a git pull to make sure you have the most recent version with git pull. 
That means any files that this version is actually depending on will be uh, updated to the most recent version and you won't accidentally roll back someone's changes, which can be very annoying. And what I mean by that is if everybody's working on a different version and then they turn in their uh, modifications they've worked so very hard on, and then you go ahead and uh, commit uh, something that doesn't include those changes, you're basically overwriting everything they've done with your changes without incorporating what they've done into your uh, modifications. So keep in mind that there may be some conflicts when you're merging different versions, and this is kind of how you'll keep track of that by isolating it into different branches. So now let's make a change. We can see that in this folder we have test.txt. So let's continue, let's uh, cat, and cat will actually concatenate, so it'll add uh, more stuff to this file. So we'll add a new line, and then we can go ahead and see the status. and we can see that this is modified. So now in order to actually go ahead and merge these, let's first git commit and then, uh, oops. All right, so now in order to actually add this, of course we have to add the file. So we'll type git add and then test.txt because as you can see, it will not do anything if you do not first tell it which files you're going to be updating. Um, it's called staging for committing. So then when we go ahead and type git commit, we should get a message that we've modified this. We can go ahead and type uh, I for input and then a message because it's really serious about that. And then escape and colon right quit. And there we go, we have now committed. So now the last thing we'll need to do is just go to checkout master. And this will bring us back, to, oops, sorry, get checkout master. And this will bring us back to our master branch. And finally, we can type git merge and then uh, new feature. And there we go. We have now merged our branch where we were doing something experimental and a change on one of the files we were tracking before. And we have merged it back with our master branch, allowing us to isolate any various features we might want to develop independently from our main creation or the thing that we're kind of riffing off of in the event that we've uh, get cloned something from a Git repository. Learning to use Git is a great part of joining the hacker community because you'll be able to share any modifications or customizations you make to files as you go on and also be able to benefit from any modifications others make to your project. Now this involves actually connecting your local repository to a remote GitHub repo. And once you do this, you'll truly be able to share things with the community and get feedback as well as maybe people's own original spin on things once they take a look at your project and get their own ideas. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts or feedback on the show, send me a message on Twitter, because I'd love to hear from you. And we'll see you next time.